on, baby. I know you can do it. Hmm. Oh, maybe that screw is in the way. Good riddance. Now, let's try that again. <laughs> I knew it! Screw you, you stupid screw! <laughs> yes! No, I mean, no, 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 no! Stop! Oh. Delivery for Mr. French. <coughs> What's with the smoke? Did you try to bake one yourself? <coughs> no, no. It's just oh, this piece of junk that almost blew up on me. Come on in, come on in. Is that the cake I ordered? Yes. If your name is Abraham French, this is your double layer vanilla cream cake. With a cherry on top? Just like you ordered, sir. Would you be so kind as to sign the receipt? Oh, absolutely. Um, let me find a clean cloth to wipe my paws with. Uh, a paw print will do, I think, Mr. French. All right. <sighs> yeah, I think that'll do. Thank you very much for shopping with Harrington's. Purveyors to Her Highness, the Queen of a Star. I appreciate the speedy delivery, miss. The Hazelwoods will be coming over for tea, and the cake is a surprise for them. I'm sure they will love it. Good day, Mr. French, and best regards to the Hazelwoods. Bye, Miss Harrington. Okay, where was I? Huh? Um, so sorry, Mr. French. I couldn't help but notice. What happened to the poor bike? Oh, um, uh, something's wrong with the engine. Nothing a woman would understand. Hmm. The HW22 is the first of the series with the new four-stroke engine, and the lubrification system can be a bit finicky. Now, if you have a 12 mil wrench, I can show you what I mean. Um, yeah, it's over in the toolbox. Uh, are you sure you can? I mean, um... Aha! The online check valve is stuck and open. That's typical. This engine hasn't been run in a while, has it? Oh, why, yes. The, the winter's been too harsh to take it for a ride. <sighs> Like a kitten. Growling like a tigress, more like. How did you do that? Something was wrong with the engine. Nothing a man would understand. <laughs> well played, young miss. Well played. Pardon my saying so, but aren't your talents being wasted delivering cakes? You're very kind, but my mother needs all the help she can get in the pastry shop. Mm. But wait a minute. Are you the daughter of Peter Harrington? Of Harrington and Welsh? Not anymore. On both counts. <sighs> Miss Harrington, your father literally invented the airplane. And clearly the same grease runs through your veins too. As a child I wanted to be an engineer. But after father's accident... Mother never got over the loss. She sold our part of the company to Mr. Welch, and I had to promise to never set foot in a workshop again. Well, unless I'm delivering cakes. Hey, French! You gotta put this poster in your window. It's from Mr. Welch. What on earth's name, Cal? Can't you see I'm having a conversation with a lady? Put the bloody thing on the counter and bugger off. Mr. Welch says you gotta put it up right away. The Trans-Oceanic Expedition has returned, and you won't believe what they found. There's going to be a big show with brass band, moving pictures, the whole shebang. For a few bucks, we'll give you a tour of the airship. And of course, we have our special attraction, the beast from another world. 
Oh, can I have a poster too? My father designed that airship. Girl, we're not running a charity. Printing these costs money. I'll put it in the window of our pastry shop. I promise. Pastry shop? Does that mean you brought me a cake? No. And what's that? That one's for Mr. French. Keep your dirty paws off. Oh. Hey. Oh. Hey. What do you think you're doing? Mm, so delicious. Mm. I'm moist. Mr. French paid for the cake. You can't just come in and eat it. And what you gonna do about it, huh? <laughs> See you at this expedition Saturday. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> oh. How rude was that? Well, if that's Mr. Welsh's new charm offensive, I see a lot of room for improvement. I'm not going to let that sucker ruin your day. I'll get you a new cake, and if I have to make it myself, will four o'clock still be fine? <laughs> Don't worry. It wasn't your fault. And there's still more left than we can eat anyway. Well, are you sure? And if you'd like to get your paws dirty again, you're more than welcome to come back after work anytime. Or how about Saturday night? I beg your pardon? But damn, that came out all wrong, didn't it? I mean, the exhibition. I think we'd have a great time together. Us, two engineers at heart. You know what I mean. I... Uh, I don't think Mother would allow that. You're a grown-up woman. Can't you go wherever you want? I wonder what you're really interested in. The airship or me? Uh, maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> I see, but what about your wife? Oh, Clarice? Pistons and crankshafts would have bored her to death. Would have? Yeah, she's no longer with me. Hasn't been for a long time. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Life must go on, doesn't it? Absolutely. You know what? I think I'll buy it. Saturday at nine, then? Yes, excellent. <laughs> Looking forward to lots of pistons and crankshafts, Mr. Friend. Me too. See you on Saturday. Bye.
She's exactly as big as I hoped she would be. I just wish we could see more of her. Just wait. They set up the biggest electric light installation in the world. It is going to look gorgeous. Oh, that is so typical for Welsh. He'll never pass off a chance to show us just how rich he is. Oh, do I hear a touch of envy? The company Harrington and Welsh was founded at my mom's kitchen table by my father the engineer, and Welsh, the salesman. He could sell you a cup of horse piss and make you believe it's a 65 Chateau de Ferret. <laughs> oh, Florence, such a potty mouth. I have absolutely no sympathy for this person. But why? Because my name is Harrington and I deliver cake. Oh, uh, yeah, point taken, sorry. If you want my advice, don't believe a word he says. This is not an exhibition. It's a sales pitch. Yeah, but the airship, it is still marvelous. Oh my god. Yes, she is. And guess who didn't design her? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Transoceanic Expedition Magical Moving Picture Show. Please take a seat. The show is about to begin. This is Fable McBrocation from Astar National Radio reporting live from Port Austin, proud capital of the Kingdom of Great Astar. The Royal Geographic Society has confirmed that Mr. Wells' expedition has indeed found a mysterious, uninhabited continent far in the Thous Asterian Sea. The Peter M. Harrington airfield is bursting with people curious to see the incredible spectacle that is about to begin celebrating the return of Mr. Wells and his crew. Harrington and Welsh, conqueror of the skies of a star and suppressor of the uprising of Banos, proudly presents the Transoceanic Expedition. We have long shared the dream of expanding our realm beyond the horizon. But so far, explorers have found nothing but a few barren islands within the ice of the Northern Sea. Thanks to the HW129 Long Range Airship, we were able to venture farther than any explorer before us. It provides twice the space for provisions, requires less than half the crew of a traditional ship, and even carries two HW21 warplanes in case defense becomes necessary. The unnamed continent is a rich tropical paradise full of exotic plants and animals never seen before and millions of acres of fertile ground rich in valuable minerals waiting to be mined and traded. But exploring a new world is a dangerous affair. You never know what awaits you. Dangerous weather, poisonous plants or even fierce savage beasts. We were peacefully flying along the shore, mapping out the coastline when we were suddenly attacked by these huge flying animals. They looked like feathered dragons, trying to sink their claws into our hull. We were in fear for our lives. They were the most horrible things we had ever seen, and they seemed to have only one thing in mind. Kill, kill, kill! The audience reels in terror as one of the beasts is revealed in the flesh, showing its sleek red body and the sharp fangs of a bloodthirsty predator. What a horrific sight indeed! I'm barely standing 20 feet away and my legs are shaking! Shaking! 
Fear not, people of Astar. The beast cannot hurt you. It was subdued and brought to the kingdom as a gift of gratitude to Her Majesty Queen Erdis of Great Astar. Together we will conquer the world with airships by Harrington and Wells. Oh my god! What a terrible show! Really? I found it quite entertaining, actually. Oh, it was dreadful, horrendous, abysmal. No mention of any of the inventions that made this ship possible in the first place. The complex multiplane fins, the two row radial engines with the centrifugal superchargers, using a gas as fuel. Oh, I could go on like this forever. So you seem to know a lot about the airship. Of course I do. My father designed it. The only thing Welsh ever contributed to it was his name. And who in their right mind puts warplanes on a research vessel? Maybe it's good for more than one purpose. Damn right. I told you, it's a sales pitch. The war against Vanus made him the richest man in the world. But that's over now. It's no coincidence he's showing us the most scary beast he could find. He needs a new threat to keep his war machines in demand. Father would have never allowed this. He wanted to make the world a better place. But would he have won the war? In war, there are no winners. Hey you, stay away from the cage. Or you lose an arm. Yes, I mean you. Hey, how would you feel locked up in a cage like that, thousands of miles away from home? Oh, shut up, one. Stop pestering the poor animal. Can't you see it's scared? I'm just showing her who's the man in the house. Is that also how you treat your wife at home? <laughs> Hello, if this isn't our esteemed Mr. French. How much cake did you have to order for the date, huh? Oh, one more word and I'm going to get up there and... Oh. He interrupts this program for these breaking news. A bomb has exploded at the Pizam Harrington airfield no. just a few seconds ago. People are running for cover, trying to find shelter. Yes. The airship doesn't seem to be damaged, but it's unclear how many are wounded or even dead. Is this a terrorist attack? Is this the revenge of the separatists from Banners? We will... We are under attack. Prepare for immediate takeoff. All crew on board. I repeat, we are under attack. Prepare for immediate takeoff. Shine some torches over here. I need some goddamn light. Ah, <sighs> oh, okay. Damn it. Uh, damn it. and help me! She's gonna bite you now. Stay away from the cage. She... Stupid one, listen. Ah. She's not an animal. 
What are you talking about? Jess said she is not an animal. What? How? How the hell did she calm her down like that? You wouldn't understand. Let's get her to the airship. Or do you want her to run alive? Uh, no, 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 of course not. Huh? Uh, and down the hatches! Close the cargo doors! Uh, All hands aboard! Uh, uh, no! Don't close the doors! Wait for us! Florence, uh, come back! No, what am I supposed to tell your mother? Uh, just make something up! You smart man! Are you kidding me? Florence! Lord the God damn it! I don't buy anything at the door. So take your samples and your magazines and have a good day, sir. Stop! M Mrs. Harrington, please! Please, Mrs. Harrington. My, my name is Abraham French. I need to talk to you. It is urgent. Have we met before? Very briefly. I ordered a cake from your shop a few days ago. French, you say. French. Yes. Double vanilla cream cake with extra olives. No. Cherries. Good grief, why would I think olives? Actually, glazed olives might work oh, on a savory carrot Miss cake Herring, with the please, right... Mrs. Herring, that is not why I'm here. It's about your daughter. Oh, Florence? Can I please come in, Mrs. Harrington? I'm afraid the matter is delicate. All right, this better be important. So, what did she do this time? Florence and I went to see Mr. Welsh's exhibition. Together. Partners in crime. How romantic. But don't you think she's a little bit too young for you? No, I, I mean, yes, I, I mean, Mrs. Harrington, that's not... I never... <laughs> you can stop sweating and fretting, Mr. French. I'm only pulling your leg. Consider it a mother's revenge. I told her not to go, and I'm sure my daughter told you that. But it's Peter's airship. So, I doubt you had to work hard to convince her to go see it. Oh. I'm afraid it's worse than that, Mrs. Harrington. There was a terrorist attack. Bombs laid by Venossian separatists. So they say... Oh my God, is Florence all right? Mrs. Harrington, I don't know. What do you mean? She tried to rescue an animal that was part of the show. She jumped on board of the airship and then it took off. With her. <sighs> That is my daughter. Strong sense of justice, her father would say. Fool-headed, if you ask me. You'll have to get used to that if you intend to keep courting her. Mrs. Harrington, please. She didn't get hurt. That's what matters. Thank you so much for coming here and letting me know. Clarice and I, we never had any children. But if we had, I, I wished it would have been a girl like Florence. I convinced her to go, and I was responsible for her safety, but I let her down, and I let you down. I'm so, so sorry. Mr. French, please stop gushing. You worry does you credit, but she is no child anymore. No matter how much old people like us wish she still were. She made her own decisions, both to go to see the airship and to board it. I just hope she's fine. Florence makes good decisions, even though they can be damn inconvenient. You and I may be worried sick, but I'm sure she's all right. Say, do you have a telephone? I'm afraid not. Okay, but I do. And Florence has my number, so... Oh, so you gave her your number. No, I assure you... <laughs> oh, I get it. You know, if she calls me, I will let you know. Otherwise, I'll check back with you tomorrow. <laughs> Let's do that. And thank you again for your help. We made it! 
Yeah, hard to believe since I had to drag you along by the petticoat. I beg your pardon? Women, why do they always have to get in the way? You now stay off the cage. Did I look like I needed your help? She did, you stupid fuck. She begged me to save her. Oh, sure, you're crazy. Maybe, but I'm still right. And you are still a fuck. And she is an intelligent being like the both of us. And she's scared to death. How would you know? Beasts can't talk. So she must not be a beast then. And she didn't talk. I mean, with her mouth, she just told me. I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, enough of that rubbish. You're not allowed to be here, and I'll have to explain, Mr. Welch, what Florence Harrington is doing in his cargo bay. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. Oh, hey, where are you going? I'm gonna try and convince Welch not to throw the both of us out the hatch. Why would you do that? Do you want it in alphabetical or chronological order? Stay where you are and keep your paws off the cage. Oh. I know it was real. And if the entire world thinks I'm crazy, I just know it. Yes, I'm talking about you. Do you understand me? You spoke to me before. Why don't you do it now? Come on, say something, please. Now you're just making fun of me. <laughs> you could have bitten my arm off, but you didn't. You can't be as evil as they say. Good girl. There's a good girl. Hello again, Florence. Uh, what? What are you doing inside my head? And how do you know my name? Oh, oh I'm not deaf, Florence. Y you don't have to think so loudly at me. Or so much. What? I think too much? You sound like my mother. Uh, what? Oh, Florence, I can barely hear you over the noise of your fear. Wait, that's not fear. You're curious, aren't you? No, you sound just like my father. Uh, your father? The accident. Oh, please don't feel so much at me. Focus, Florence. Focus on me. On us. Here and now. Relax. Think less. Say more. I'll try, Arthur. I'll try. <sighs> ah, yes. So much better. Wait. Arthur? Is that your name? How do I know your name? The same way I know yours. Yes, my name is Arthur, guardian of the realm. Realm? Which realm? Where are you from? We just call it home. Now, Florence, I would like to know where I am right now. This is the kingdom of Great Astar. That doesn't mean anything to me. Could you picture it in your head? Yes, but I never got to see much of it from above. Oh, but you wanted to, didn't you? To fly, like your father. Oh, it breaks my heart to see you are still so full of sadness after even so many years. Was I still thinking about him? Wait, you're thinking about someone too? Someone you lost? My brother, Sitho, he was a guardian like me. The deaf ones came in their flying machines. We flew out to guide them to a safe landing place, but they attacked us, and soon the sea was red with the blood of my kin. Those who survived hid in the forest, high up in the mountains. I was injured, and they captured me. Deaf? You mean... You couldn't read their minds? To me, this is as, as normal as talking is to you. Oh, 
I'm so glad we found each other. Everything makes so much more sense now. So, this Mr. Welsh is the one who built the warship? And I am the trophy he wants to present to his queen? Arthur, I definitely wasn't thinking about any of that. You were snooping. Can you blame me? I'm in a cage. Now, you need to talk to Cal. He is the only one who can get me out of this thing. Why would you do that? He's like, why's left hand? I don't need to snoop to find out what you think of him. But there is more to him than you know. He cared for my wounds. He spent a lot of time finding out what kind of food I like. And he made a lot of gentle mouth noises when nobody was looking. I think he likes me. Not enough to let you free. But enough to bring me fish. You? <laughs> oh, could you please not think about the smell so much? <laughs> and to me, he's basically been... <laughs> An asshole? <laughs> This is such a funny image. <laughs> oh, no, don't blush. It's really funny. <laughs> a lady is not supposed to say that. <laughs> but you think it all the time. <gasps> oh, do you hear that? I think someone is coming. Oh, will you stay close to me? It seems we need to touch each other to hear each other. Maybe I can hear them through your ears. There she is. Well, she's gone completely out of her mind. I tried to keep her from entering the ship, but uh, getting the beast out of danger was my first priority. Miss Harrington, welcome aboard my humble ship. May I know the reason why you're honoring us with this unexpected visit? I helped Kel move the cage into the cargo bay, and I didn't manage to get off the ship in time. As simple as that. I suppose I should thank you. This cage contains my company's future after all. Nothing sells warplanes like a new threat from the air. I'm sure the Queen will agree, especially after Venosian Towers bombed my exhibition. Did you have a hand in that? The one Harrington, who was never supposed to set foot on an airplane again. I have nothing to do with the bombs, or the terrorists, or even you. I just wanted to save Arthur. Save who? The beast. Her name is Arthur. And she's not an animal. She feared for her life when the bombs went off. Cal needed my help to get her out of danger. She wow. speaks with her mind, and only I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> the bombs must have rung your pretty little bell quite hard, Miss Harrington. I remember you as a young girl. Far too clever to be such a terrible liar. When your expedition reached the coast of her homeland, it was you who opened fire on them. You didn't even consider the possibility that it might be a people. You wiped them out of the sky just because you could. Tell me, does the Queen know you're a war criminal? Who told you that? Kel! Uh, no, no, sir, I didn't, I swear. He's right. Arthur did. <sighs> this is not a game, Miss Harrington. If you don't want to hear the truth, why do you even ask? I don't take kindly to terrorists on my ship. Take her into custody. Strip her down and see if she got any explosives on her. Uh, what? Then, take her to Dr. McKenzie. He knows how to make people talk. Yes, yes sir. Uh, wait! Uh, Cal! You must set her free! She remembers how you treated her wounds, how you, how you tried to protect her, and how you tried to soothe her when she was scared. She knows how much you like her. She says thanks for all the fish. <laughs> hey, 
She's going to sing like a little bird at the mere sight of the knife, sir. Something is very odd about her. She doesn't seem that insane. Sir, you think she didn't make it all up? You're going to stay here and stand guard, Kel. Don't let anybody near the cage. Of course, Mr. Welsh. I'll be upstairs. Dr. Mackenzie can sometimes be a little bit too enthusiastic. Of course. Uh, have a good day, Mr. Welsh. <whistles> the fish. Nobody, nobody knows I stole the fish. How the hell does Florence know about it? Can she really? Talk to Arthur? Arthur? Is that really your name? <sighs> Fuck me backwards. <laughs> In all the time I've spent with you, how could I have been so blind? You... You are not the beast. Arthur, I am the beast. Fuck me. Fuck me. Look at me. I... I didn't... didn't know you were a person. I thought I was keeping you safe. I, I didn't want you to be a prisoner. I'm... I'm so sorry. I... I love you, Arthur. I really do. Now I'm crying like a little girl. <laughs> please, please don't tell anybody, okay? <sighs> well, she's gonna rip my head off. But if I owe you anything, then it's this. I said go! What are you waiting for? Oh! Florence Scarf? Yes, yes, I get it, I will, yes. Now go! Go! The Port Osborne Telegraph, I'm at Crawford speaking. Yes, I'm the chief editor. George who? No, no, we do not reveal our sources. Now what kind of newspaper do you take us for? Of course we are adhered to the journalistic code of ethics. Yes, by all means. Now get that court order if you want to. Ah, yeah, yeah. Have a good day, sir. Oh, yeah. Come in! Excuse me, Mr. Crawford? Oh, it's you. Mm, listen, if you're here to pitch the Harrington and Welch story again, save your breath, kid. That's at least one size too big for a first-year trainee. Please, boss, hear me out. I've done some more research and I really... No, Julian. Why don't you do something useful? After the recent attack, the obituary department needs all help they can get. With all due respect, sir, I came here to be a journalist, and the Telegraph is an institution. Forgive me for eavesdropping, but I heard how strongly you defended your source on the phone. Please, give me a chance. <sighs> all right, all right. But just remember this. Appealing to my sense of journalistic pride will work exactly once in your career here. So you better make it count. Now, what you got? I'm sure I'm onto something. 
Shortly after the death of Peter M. Harrington, Sarkand T. Welch bought out the other half of the company from his wife. The moment he had sole ownership, he immediately changed the company's direction. He diversified, founded a weapons department and bought out a number of smaller companies in the automotive, telegraph and telephone business. And did you notice there were no terrorist attacks before the buyout? Oh, that's all public knowledge! And it's not surprising we were heading directly into a war with Vanus. You are missing up cause and a fact. But also, Eva Harrington sold the part of the company she had inherited from her husband way under price. <laughs> well, I guess she's not a very capable negotiator then, huh? Mm. Don't waste my time, Julian. Where is the scoop? I compiled all the reports and eyewitness accounts of the most recent attack at the airfield and they led me to believe that Florence Harrington is currently on board of the airship. Eyewitnesses? Well, eyewitnesses make good headlines. No, but that's all hearsay. Where is the proof? Boss, look at the big picture. Something isn't right and I want to find out what it is. Please, please let me. Isn't that what good journalism is all about? All right. I hope you figured that out by yourself. Let me tell you something about journalism. Hmm? Sit down, kid. Now, Julian, you know who pays you, right? Yes, the company. Right. And who pays the company? Uh, our subscribers? And our advertisers, which are? Uh, I don't know. And you call yourself an investigator? Ha! Ah! Snow Chemical, Bank of Aster, Redwood Motors, and Express Telegram. Now, guess who owns the majority of those companies? <sighs> Harrington and Welch. And guess what they'll do if we start snooping around Mr. Welch's business practices, huh? <sighs> They'll no longer pay us. But if we let that hold us back, doesn't that violate all the rules of good journalism? Oh, my boy. Journalism is a job, like any other. You work, you get paid, you can put food on the table. Welch owns this country, like it or not. And since I like being able to feed my wife and kids, I don't care what's right or wrong about that. Even if you find out that he's personally fucking Eva Harrington's daughter right up there in his personal Mile High Club, I don't want to know about it! Sorry to burst your bubble, kid. But we are a newspaper, not a charity. Now go and help out the obituaries department. Something tells me they are going to get even busier. Customer, how nice. Uh, whom do I have the honor? Her name is Harrington. Uh, Florence Harrington, to be exact. Uh, welcome to my office, Miss Harrington. It is a pleasure to meet you. Who are you? My name is Dr. Mackenzie, and truth. Is my one God. He fears none. He's without hate. He never dies. He's beyond the cycle of birth and death. He was true in the beginning. He was true when the ages commenced and has ever been true. He's also true now. Are you ready to meet the one true God? <laughs> Mackenzie! There are two things I need to know. Number one, why is she really here? Number two, who told the Miss what happened during the expedition? And I need to make sure she survives the procedure. Because otherwise I would have to kill her mother too. And that would make things really complicated. And I hate when things get complicated. 
<laughs> Better don't even leave any marks. <laughs> Absolutely. Who in their right mind could cut up such a beautiful young face anyways? <laughs> I'm looking forward to the reports, Mr. Mackenzie. What, what are you going to do to me? Oh, that depends entirely on you. If I need to know the truth, all I need to know is the truth. And it will all be over in a minute. Mr. Way said you're not allowed to injure me. <sighs> and I don't have to. This year, for example, is a fresh dose of red shoelace snake venom. It's like a fine wine for the connoisseur of pain. It starts off light, ephemeral, almost fruity, like a tiny spark singeing the fur on your arms. After a while, that will make way for a more rich, hearty, slightly uh, crunchy taste of pain. Not unlike to getting your tail mashed in a revolving door. And it will keep growing bold and unrelenting, like somebody is using a drill to excavate your ingrown toe claw. And then, finally, the world will cease to exist and there is nothing but pure, intense, brilliant pain. Now, are you going to talk to me or not? Ugh. What the hell is it? I am serving a customer. You ordered a coffee, sir. No, I didn't. And are you new here? I hate coffee. Oh, uh. In that case, I guess I don't need it anymore. The pain, the pain is so good. <laughs> Enjoy it by the last pervert. Uh, what? Oh, oh. oh uh, yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, that's my name. All right, I need to get out of here quickly. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad Arthur was right about you. Let's get this over with before someone smells a rat. We don't have time for sentimental drivel. You're free now, come on. Thank you, Carl. Don't thank me too early, because you and I are basically dead men walking unless we get off this ship real fast. What about Arthur? I let her go, and she flew away. Wow, you really did that? Listen, girl, there are two airplanes in the back, fueled and ready to go. I hope your daddy taught you well to fly this, because I can't. Uh, what? But I've never flown a plane alone before. We have the choice between dying up here or maybe not dying down there. But we can't just steal a plane! Of course we can! No more excuses, oh, we have to go! Go, right, go, right. go, go, oh, go! pushing me! Down the hallway, then right! No, left! That's the shorter way! What the fuck? Trust me, I've started the plans a thousand times! I know this ship inside out! Oh, oh my head! Ah, oh, so much for that! They must have made a few revisions since then! Will you ever shut up? Hey, you! Stop! The lower decks have been sealed off. Security reasons. I cannot let you pass. Uh, but I have a special permit for Mr. Welsh. Oh, really? Can I see it? Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, 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 oh. oh. What the hell is going on down there? Shit, that didn't go too well. Run, 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 run! <laughs> All right, lock the door. <laughs> no use, it only locks from the other side. But it'll take us a moment to get us ready for takeoff. And shut up and 
do it! Right. Seat belts. Close and locked. Brakes. Who gives a damn? Sacred breakers. In. Master switch. On. Are you done yet? I'm not even halfway through the checklist. What? Checklist? We don't have time for shit like that. The pre fight checklist is essential to make sure no important tasks are forgotten. The only important task is to get the fuck out of here. Can you open the bay doors? Uh... I'll try. Fuel shot above. On. Propeller area. Check. Magnectos. Hmm. Check. Ignition. Start. Throttle. Ah. 1,000 RPM. All pressure normal. Radios yeah. on. Now we're talking. Altimeter set. Oh. Fuel quantity check. Autopilot. I oh. wish. Suction gauge check. Yeah. Enter instruments check. Strobe lights on. Now it's the time to show what you're made of. And I hope it's not cake. Buckle up and hold onto your back. Huh? Passenger breathing complete! Um, Florence? Florence? Are we there yet? Where? Wherever we are going. All I know right now is that we're somewhere above the sea. The Western Sea? I sure hope so, because we're heading east. Uh, it's not going to get any more specific than that. What do you expect? It's pitch black out there. I have no landmarks, no coastline. Only the goddamn compass. If we manage to reach the shore, maybe we can spot something we know, like the lighthouse at Port Aspen. But until then, no, it's not going to get any more specific than that. Uh. Harrington and Welch Airlines is terribly sorry for the inconvenience, and our customer service will gladly give you a full refund. It's, it's just that our fuel won't last forever, you know? Look, Mr. Smarty Pants, I'm enough of a nervous wreck already, so will you please just shut up? Coward. Asshole. <laughs> uh, Cal? Uh, Cal? I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to snap at you like that. Oh, fuck you. I'm thankful you saved me, really. I'm just also very... Very scared. I'm shaking so much I can barely fly in a straight line. Huh. Well, too bad for you. Come on, you love to talk big like a man. But the moment someone dares to come back at you, you stop off in a half like an injured prima donna. Ah, right. If you're trying to pretend this doesn't affect you at all, you're doing a pretty bad job. You're just as frightened as I am. Well, if you say so. What makes it so hard for you to admit that you actually have a heart? The heart is weak. Strength and intelligence makes you a man. Unbelievable! It's like you want people to think you're an asshole. You saved my life. And you set Arthur free. If that didn't come from the heart, what kind of manly, rational bargain were you hoping to get out of it? I think we can rule out job security. What the fuck did you want from me? I don't have to justify, justify myself to you or something. I just had hoped there's at least a little bit of compassion left in you. It's a good thing, you know. Hotel Whiskey 3 to 9er, do you read me? Hotel Whiskey 3 to 9er, do you read me? Uh, no, no, don't, don't answer them. Don't they already know where we are? Hotel Whiskey 3 to 9 we have located you by your radio beacon. 
We are now going to escort you to Old Osborne Airfield. Reduce airspeed immediately. What are they going to do if we don't? Well, first they will hunt us down, and then they will kill us. Oh, oh and your mother too, if they didn't do that already. Are you kidding me? I wish I were. This isn't funny. What the hell has my mother to do with all this? More than you think. You'd better talk straight to me, or I will personally throw you out of this dust! Just... 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 The Harrington Marsh Company has the exclusive air sovereignty over the skies for Star, and we have authority to use any means necessary to stop you. This is our final warning. Okay, this is it. I'm giving up. No! Don't fall for it! They think you're a terrorist from Vanos. Once we get in the firing range, we are toast! I'm not a goddamn fighter pilot! I'm not even a normal pilot! Shut up and fly! Oh shit! doesn't give a fuck about the plane. Oh, he cares about me and the things I know. Oh, it's always about you, isn't it? But it fucking is. I know a lot of things that most people don't. Welch used to trust me like a member of, it, of his family, but now I'm on the plane with the enemy. Do you realize what that means? And you gave all this up for what? Keep flying long enough! 
Florence? Florence? Why aren't you saying anything? Shut up! I'm talking to Arthur! Uh, okay, and, and what does she say? She says that you have to use the parachute. Uh, what? That's not what I said. She will carry me to the ground and then pick you out of the water. Oh, I can totally do that. I have a very good night vision. Uh, and why me? Because you're a strong man. You can handle it. Uh, yeah, sure, but, uh, it looks kind of wet down there, you know? Come on, Arthur. Let's go. What? Hey! Are you sure he will be all right? Oh, hey. yes. A little cool down will do him good. Hey! So that's what I get for getting you out of that cage, you goddamn bitch! Ah, uh, all right then. One, two, two and a half, three, two, one. Oh, fuck it. Geronimo! Mr. French! Mrs. Harrington! I've been waiting for you. Come in. And? Did you get a call from Florence? I'm afraid I didn't. Oh, I thought this was just one of her escapades. But she's been gone for a whole day now. I wish there was anything I could do. But I can't leave the shop during the day. Especially not when I'm a woman short. And you don't have to. I called a few friends and I did some research. And what did you find out? I've got good news and bad news. And I've got a short temper and a rolling pin, if you give me another cliché like that. All right, all right. The airship has not returned to Port Hospin. And there's a rumor Mr. Welsh himself is keeping the airship in a holding pattern offshore to keep himself safe from further attacks. You mean Florence is stuck on the ship with Mr. Welsh? Please let that be the bad news. That was the good news because it explains why she's still missing. But the ship has a radio. It would have been a simple thing to send a message. Have you tried calling H&W headquarters? Yeah, of course I did. They referred me to their official statement and just refused any further help. So what is their official statement? Please don't grab the rolling pin now, but here come the bad news. I checked with a friend at A&R and the official statement is that there is an ongoing investigation against a group of Anosian terrorists, and that a suspect is being held in custody on board the airship. And you think they might mean Florence? But she would never do anything like that. I'm convinced she only wanted to help, but she hates Welsh. So he has every reason to doubt her good intentions. <sighs> Welsh! Schemers like him always think everybody's as treacherous as they are. Mr. Welsh, you know him, huh? I wish I didn't. Oh yeah, that's right. He bought your husband's company, didn't he? I'd rather not talk about it. I just really, really don't want Florence anywhere near him. Or on any of his planes. I'm sorry, Mrs. Harrington. I didn't mean to pry. It's good to know you care. Could you do me a favor? Of course. Please call me Eva. And may I call you Abraham? <laughs> Abe. My friends call me Abe. I'm so touched by all the support you're giving me, Abe. And since I've had little to do but worry, I made you a little thank you gift. <laughs> Caramel chocolates? <laughs> thank you, Eva. How did you know these were my favorites? I have my sources too. Now, it would be a crying shame to go back home and eat these all by myself. Oh? Yes, I might gain a tremendous amount of weight. And besides, if Florence does call, you should be there to talk to her. That does make sense. But I still have to do the cash check and tidy up the place. I can help you with the cleaning if you want. After the incident at the airfield, my shop was practically deserted anyway. 
You're too kind. Anything for a lovely lady. <laughs> well then, come this way. If you are as handy with a mop as you are with a wrench, we should be done in no time. I, I thought I was freezing to death. <laughs> Where the hell are we? I can barely see the lighthouse in the north, I think. Uh, oh, great. I hope Vanos is as safe as they say these days. There seems to be a small farm nearby. Maybe they will let you stay overnight. And there's still some light in the house. Let's go. No, no! We are fugitives! What if they report us? We're going to hide in the barn and be off before sunrise. They never know we were, we were there. Ah, damn, it's locked. That means we have to break in. But that's illegal! The fact that we're still breathing is illegal, okay? Look over there. That drain pipe. That will be our way in. Oh, that's just stupid. I just walk over and knock no. at that... No! You're going to wait right here! Bloody women. You need something done, you gotta do it yourself. I'm already wet to the bone, so what could possibly go wrong? Uh oh. Is this going to stop Caligula the savior? No, it will only make him stronger. Cat eating tentacles! That was weird. I enjoyed that more than I should have. Thank you for helping me, my friend. Huh? Two friends? So much for being nice for a change. Damn, this looks so much easier in the comic books. But turning back is not an option. Caligula the savior is not going to make himself the laughing stock of the party. Forward ever, backwards never. This is so... Uh, uh, what is this? Uh, I just don't want to know, I think. Oh, uh, shit. my humble barn. I wish I could offer you something better, though. 
All we need is a roof above our heads. Thank you so much, Will. We do value our hospitality here in Venice. Can I invite you for breakfast tomorrow? Uh, it ain't often another plane crashes um, in my bank, y'all. <laughs> of course! Now, where tarnation is that friend of yours? Uh, um, good question. When we left, he was just checking out the drain pipe. Drain pipe? My barn ain't got the drain pipe. Uh, him? I'm afraid so. Cal? Cal? Where are you? I, I'm down here. I came from outside. Uh, uh, yeah. what, are, what the hell are you waiting for? Uh. Huh. Well, I'll be damned. What the hell are you doing down there? Asking stupid questions to get me out. I'm on it. Hang in tight. What are you doing in my toilet? Duh. Name's Cal. Royal Pipe Inspection Service. Duh. Did you know that you have a serious tentacle problem down there? Very funny, Cal. Very funny. But now it's time to go inside and take a nap. Ah, 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 ah. I reckon Mr. Pipe Inspector here should, could use a valve. Ah, I go and get a tub. Uh, only if it's not too much trouble. Mm. Eh, it's all right. I'll be back in a sec. <sighs> that was the most embarrassing thing what? that ever happened to me. But I... No buts. You almost ruined it! What? When will you stop throwing your goddamn weight around? Well, I'm, I'm... Who are you trying to impress? Me! I was only trying to help. You I was... smell like a maggot-infested raccoon! Rotting at the bottom of a rain barrel! So For I'm... two weeks! No, I... I mean... In the sun! Yeah, but... Right, yeah, I... With the lid on! <sighs> Listen to me! No! How about you just shut up for once? Think you can do that? Good. Fuck's sake. Oh, don't be so mad at him. He was just trying to help. Oh, you find this pretty funny, don't you? <laughs> Actually, yes. Pipe inspector. <laughs> Are you picking my mind again? No, you're just still thinking very loudly. <sighs> Here we are. Fresh bar for the deep diver. Perfect. Thank you. Ah, you're welcome. <sighs> oh well, time for me to hit the set. I'll be seeing you all in the morning, all right? Yeah. Good night, Will. Night. Thanks, Will. You know what's funny? You two leggers have fur, but you are still wearing clothes. Why's that? Oh, there's more than one reason. They protect us, they look nice, and they keep things hidden. What kind of things? Uh, um, <laughs> male and female things? Oh, 
Seeing him naked arouses you. Oh, Arthur, <laughs> those are my most private feelings. <laughs> oh, the images. Hmm, so that's how you two-legged people are. Arthur! <laughs> Why are you so ashamed about everything? I mean, how about you? Aren't you curious how it feels when we do it? No! <laughs> oh, what a shame. It's really good. <laughs> you just don't want me to sleep tonight, do you? <laughs> are you two talking about me again? Of course! The whole world arose around you after all. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yes, I screwed up. There, I admitted it. Is that what you wanted to hear? Well, it's a start. Fine. Anything else? See, he's not so bad. Well, let's see if you can get anything out of him to open up a little more. You would make a great psychotherapist. Well, I am in a way. So, Cal, after you let Arthur free, why did you come back to rescue me? You were my only chance to get off the ship alive, so... I don't think that was the reason. Something seemed to cause him grief. I even saw him crying. I had to push him a little bit in the right direction. Cal, be honest with me. But I am. Wait. Damn, Orpha, right? She told you everything. Oh yeah, just keep kicking me while I'm down. I'm well used to that. Uh, does she know what I'm saying? She understands everything I understand. As long as we're touching. Fucking brilliant. Here I am, naked, smelling like shit, and there are you with your living lie detector judging me smug as fuck. <laughs> so much for your moral superiority. Oh, I'm sorry, it comes naturally. I didn't think anything of it. But you're right. <sighs> Whoops. I didn't save you to save myself. I did it because I owed it to you. Both of you. I had to make right what I did wrong. I love you, Arthur. You're the most magnificent being I've ever seen. When the bombs exploded, I was more scared for your life than my own. I feel so guilty for not realizing you're a person. I didn't have the right to keep you in a cage. I spent so much time with you, but I was too blind to see what you really are. I'm so sorry, Arthur. I hope you can forgive me. Oh, so that's what he tried to tell me back in the cargo hold. Oh, if I had only known. Poor Cal. <laughs> there goes my last shred of dignity. <laughs> Actually, that was the most dignified thing I've ever heard you say. And of course Arthur forgives you. You were very brave. Thank you. You... You too. I'm... I'm sorry for being so mean to you. I... Wait, 
You thought about my father. I... Why did you think about my father? You s you saw that. Cal, why? I... It is quite unpleasant to be overwhelmed with someone else's thoughts. But it's getting better as soon as your mind begins to take it all in. It felt the same way it did when you touched me for the first time. But how can this be? Cal has touched you countless times and there never was a connection. Uh, a connection? Is that how it feels? I think it's you, Florence. You mean, if I touch you and someone touches me... Let's do it again. No! Talking to me has always been one of his greatest desires. We should let him, I think so. No, it felt like a steam train running right through my head. His mind is a mess right now. If he could somehow manage to calm himself down, it won't nearly be so bad. Pretty, pretty please? All right, but there's something you must know. Unlike her, we have not learned to keep our thoughts to ourselves. You might tell us your darkest secrets, your most intimate desires, things you never wanted anybody to know. Are you ready to pay the price? I've never been so ready. All right, close your eyes, clear your thoughts. Relax. Now, take my hand. Uh. Hello, Caligula, my savior. <laughs> Hello, Arthur. I, I love you. I know. I can feel it. And I, I have to tell you something, Florence. The death of your father was no accident. Wells had him murdered. I can't believe Welsh killed father just so he could have the company to himself. Does he have no heart? Feelings can be so confusing. With Welsh, I always knew where I stood. He said what he meant and meant what he said. Very rational man, I admired that. I'm not very emotional myself. You're lying to yourself, Cal. But don't lie to me. Right now, you're bursting with emotion. And you don't hide them well. I'm sorry. No, I am sorry. For what your mother did to you. And your father. How do you know about that? I never told anyone. You did. To me, right now. I warned you. Keeping your thoughts to yourself takes a lot of restraint. Uh, what else do you know about me? That you cried every time your mother abused you. And your father wouldn't believe you. He'd threaten you if you didn't stop crying. Yes, yeah, stop crying, he said. Or I'll give you a reason to cry. That's terrible! I don't want your pity. Pain is a good teacher, you know. And talking doesn't make anything better, so why bother? I didn't want to hurt you, I swear. I can't read your thoughts against your will. And no, Florence. He does not have a crush on me because I'm a giant furry surrogate mother. Stop thinking that, it's not true. Oh, did I? Oh, you both have a lot to learn. Your thoughts are as loud as screaming children. This is intimate, so be gentle with each other, and don't judge. So, how did you end up working for Welsh? An ad in the newspaper, if you can believe it. I wanted to leave this mess of a family as soon as possible. I applied shortly after Welsh took over the company, and they gave me the grand title of Deputy Assistant to the Secretary of Mr. Welsh. I made coffee, ran errands, and I never asked questions. That must have impressed him. And you never felt any remorse? I was his assistant, not his hitman. 
Still, you knew everything. I didn't make those decisions. I just had to do what I was told. It is all all right, Kel. We all can't change our past, but we can change our future. <sighs> This is awkward. I used to be pretty much the opposite of you. All heart and no head. Always wanting to make everyone around me happy. And you can't imagine how many times it was a stupid idea. Don't believe you were all wrong. I wish I was more like you. Well, a little bit at least. And if you want me to be your giant teddy bear every now and then, I'll be happy to oblige. I did not just think that. Loud and clear. Now oh, fuck me in a hammock. <laughs> oh, come here, you poor two-legged creature. And what about me? And you too. Let's call it a night and share some dreams, shall we? Hello, my little friends. Isn't it a wonderful day? Come here. I have a treat for you. <laughs> There you go. Come here. <laughs> huh? Oh, Sorry. <laughs> Let me just put this over here. <clears throat> your Majesty, Mr. Welsh awaits the privilege of your company. Punctual as ever. Show him in. Your wish is my command, Your Majesty. Your Majesty. You may approach. I do hope you're bringing good news. Ah. Damn butterflies. Ah. Oh yes, Your Majesty. The banquet manager and I have put our heads together and we've come up with a way to make the upcoming state ceremony even more spectacular. Indeed. Your plans must be sensational. If you presume to charge even more to the royal treasury... No, 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 no. Absolutely not, your majesty. Here, please have a look. Huh. Okay. So, hmm. Hmm, 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 I see. An even bigger cake. If you insist. More electric lights? A gold-plated cage for the beast? Really? It looks magnificent. Everybody will want one. That may be, but the budget remains fixed. The House of Astar should be well presented, but we will not be remembered for wasteful excess. Do we understand each other? Your Majesty will be remembered for ensuring the safety and prosperity of Astar. The cage and the animal are my personal gift for your majesty's collection. All preparations will of course be done at my own expenses. In our experience, nothing costs more than a gift. Presumably, there is a price that you didn't write on this piece of paper. Well, we have to make a few small adjustments to the list of suppliers ah. and a slight change in the schedule. Huh. But that's it. Such as? I have talked to Eva Harrington, and I'm afraid supplying a cake of these dimensions are beyond her capacity. So that commission would have to go to Cantrell's Bakery in Troutburg instead. 
And the gold plating on the cage um, will take three extra days to finish. Uh, so it c w <clears throat> would be great if you could press... No! <clears throat> I I'm sorry, your majesty. Apology accepted, Mr. Welsh. We are pleased you regret bothering the butterflies with such disagreeable demands. Your Majesty, I, I don't think I understand. As you know, Mr. Welsh, you serve the House of Astar, and the Royal Court is not one of your carnival attractions. You must be so embarrassed for thinking you could dictate the terms of our arrangement. I assure your majesty that all my intentions are only in the Crown's best interest. Of course, Mr. Welsh, and your service is appreciated. Such as your impeccable consultation of the imminent uprising in Vanos. Do you remember the one that never happened? Oh, your highness. We've been through this before. I swear by my life, I never withheld any information from you. Oh, Vanos was a peaceful country. Its borders undisputed for centuries. We marched in like invaders. Tens of thousands of innocent civilians paid with their lives. And the kingdom of a star has been reunited. Something that nobody had thought possible. And all thanks to you, my queen, and your wise decision. That is the official version. And the version that we both come off best with. And that is the only reason you're not dangling from the oak tree on Timber Hill yet. You're a cunning man. And in these troubled times, we value your connections. And you're very useful through to the royal court. But. Don't treat your queen like a fool ever again! The war on Vanos was one of the biggest profit you ever made. Your own little empire only exists because we allow it. And I'm eternally grateful for your generosity, your highness. The kingdom of Astar prospers. Our cities grow. At some point, our island will be too small and colonization will become inevitable. Our interests are well aligned with yours right now. But in the great equation of our country's history, the crown is the constant, and you are merely a variable. Of course, your highness. The date of the state ceremony stands and we will not break our long and excellent relationship with the Harringtons over a few more levels on a cake. We appreciate that you so graciously agree to the wisdom of these decisions. Thank you for the paper, Mr. Welsh. We are certain the moth will gladly accept your gift. <clears throat> if Mr. Welch, please, would follow me to the door? Um, would it be possible to use the uh, mobile phone before I leave? I have a few business arrangements to make for the state ceremony. Certainly. Please wait here. Something funny with the cable, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Now, if you could have some privacy, please. Important royal business matters. Of course, sir. <clears throat> Hello, operator. Please give me number 4441. Thank you. 
Hi! There, it's me, Welch. I'm using the phone in the palace, so I'm pretty sure nobody is listening. They are not going to postpone the reception. That means you have three days to get Arthur back. Arthur! The Beast! Yes, I know. I don't care how. It has to work! We got away with the whole Venice affair. But if you want to do it again, I need the Queen to trust me. No questions asked. We'll be safe once past the point of no return. But that's a long way off. Call the think tank. Let them do their thing. Propaganda, bribes, let them stage something. As long as the Queen thinks we saved her royal hind. No, that's not all. About the Harringtons. Florence is dead. And that means Eva Harrington needs to be terminated. ASAP. What? Florence is still alive? And Cal too! Where are they? Why don't you tell me that earlier? I know I talk a lot, that's because I have a lot to say! <sighs> so what are you waiting for? Kill them! Yes, all of them include Eva! Because otherwise they would spill the beans. That's why you're moron! <sighs> Arthur? Yes? What exactly does Guardian of the Realm mean? It's not nearly as exciting as it sounds. It's my duty to fly along the border and report anything unusual. From bad weather to unexpected guests. Oh, so there's more than one realm? Five, in fact. Dumath, Wandoth, Klam, Sirotho, and the desert in the south. Nobody lives there. Does the continent have a name too? We just call it home, and that's also its name. How do your people live? I mean, do you have houses, streets? Do you know numbers and letters? Of course we have houses. And proper ones, of course. Not as tiny as yours. We also have streets, but only for moving heavy goods. Why walk when you have wings? The best houses are at the cliffside of the mountains, and there is no path leading there. You have to fly. But nobody sees that as an inconvenience. We are much more versatile in the air than we are on foot. And yes, we know numbers. Not that I'm very good with them, though. And your diet? Do you only eat fish and fresh meat? We cook. We have many ways to preserve food. How else are we supposed to eat in winter? I prefer fresh meat, though. So if you're hungry, you have to go hunting? If I have the time and friends to go with, we hunt more for fun than for anything else. It's a lot more convenient to just buy your food at the town market. Also, the quality is so much better. How do you talk to each other? I mean, do you always have to hold hands? And uh, what if you want some privacy? Our minds are our voices. We don't need to touch. If we want to be heard far away, we think loudly. And when we want to keep something to ourselves, we think quietly. Unlike you two. This sounds so fascinating. And the images. I wish I could visit your realm one day. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. It's a beautiful place. But don't let that deceive you. We have our share of trouble in politics. In that regard, we are not that much different than you two-leggers. Can you lie to each other? Are there criminals? Why am I not surprised you are the one to ask that question? We can lie, which makes justice as difficult for us as it is to you. When someone is accused of a crime, they are brought to the trial before the elders and can defend themselves. Only in extreme cases, they can be forced to expose their most private thoughts and memories to the court of the elders. I thought you can't read someone's mind against their will. Nor can I speak to someone's mind against their will. But the elders can, when joining their minds together. It's a brutal and painful procedure. 
especially if the subject resists. Some have even lost their minds. It's very scary. There's a huge political debate going on whether this procedure is a necessary evil or if it should be outlawed once and for all. I don't even want to know what you could do to our minds. Your thoughts are so frail and brittle. Talking to you is like walking on thin ice. But I like you. I could never harm you. Besides, we are not a violent people. If we cause pain to one another, we can feel it like it was our own. If that doesn't stop you, you have a heart of stone. Like Welsh. You can't imagine how much I wish I could make him feel the pain he caused. That would teach him a lesson. I'm afraid we'll have to find another way to make him pay for his crimes. And you know a lot more about those than I do. Yeah, we're not going to run out of things to talk about anytime soon. Someone needs to write a book about this. I didn't know you could write! Oh, shut up, woman! <laughs> <laughs> Our brothers and sisters. Why do I always have to sit in the back? Because you're stupid. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You don't even know how to ride a dragon. Oh, yes, I do. No, you don't. Just wait. I'll show you. Ah! Mm. Ah! 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 Hey! Hey, be gentle. Walter's ah! lawn toy. Ah! Mommy! It's enough! Out with you, all three! Out, out, out! Go play on the beach! Can we keep her? She's so fluffy! No, we can't! She's not a pig, you know? Oh, man! Goodbye, Mrs. Arthur! It's so nice to have children in the house again. But sometimes silence is golden. Arthur says they're adorable. And you should be glad they don't grow wings. <laughs> oh my god, yes. <laughs> Are they all yours? Oh uh, no, no, no. <laughs> they are orphans of the war. Well is teaching them how to read and write and be good farm hands. My own son moved out year, ages ago. Uh, what about you? I used to living with your mom. Yes, and she's probably dying of sorrow, not knowing where I am. Do you have a telephone? I'm afraid not. Next one is in the post office in St. Eliza, about 15 miles away. Damn, then we need to find someone to take us there. Huh. Do you think the people here will help us? Oh, why shouldn't they? Because for them, I am probably the most anti-Venotian guy save for Welsh himself. <sighs> oh, rubbish. It don't matter who you are, it matters what you do. They may be patriotic, but they're not stupid. When they see Arthur, they have no reason to doubt you. I am back, honey. Oh, <laughs> hello everybody. Come in and have a seat. Sorry for dragging you in uh, like this by your tails. <laughs> Let me make you all acquainted to my guests. Uh, this here is Florence Harrington. She's the girl of Peter Harrington. And uh, that next to her is Caligula Davis. He was a former assistant of that Welsh fella. Uh, and, and that's Miss Arthur. Wearing the beast nor a dragon, no matter what she may look like. Then what in the land's name is she? 
She is a person. Her people have a highly developed culture, but they communicate with their minds only. For some reason, she can only speak to me. Well, and those who I can touch. I wonder how much effort it's taking them to not stare at me. Oh, shush. That sounds pretty fantastic. How do we know you're not making it all up? Eh. Um. <laughs> Think. You, I guess. Anyway, I accidentally discovered that Arthur is telepathic. She begged me to help her, and that's how I ended up in Welsh airship when it took off after the bomb attacks in Port Ospen. I was Arthur's guard at the time. Don't ask me how, but Florence managed to convince me to switch sides and set Arthur free. We tried to flee from Welsh airship in one of his fighter planes. But his men shot us down. Only thanks to Arthur's help, we managed to survive. Man, plane crashed right into my bag, y'all. Well, since you're obviously holding up so well, why aren't you going back to the star where you came from? Because Welsh wants us dead. That's almost as bad as the Queen herself wanting us dead. A star is no longer a place for us to go home to. Now, isn't that ironic? Certainly not for Arthur. She's stranded thousands of miles away from home in a world she does not understand. Venus versus a star means nothing to her. I still don't trust you. Did you know the Queen never wanted war against Venus? Welsh conned her into it. What? I knew this would get you interested. Father's early planes were designed for entirely peaceful purposes. Welsh, however, figured that it would earn a lot more by selling them as instruments of war. When Father refused, we sabotaged his plane and he died. Welsh then forced my mother to sell him Father's half of the company. He threatened to kill me if she refused, or the truth ever came to light. And now what sells weapons better than a war? Welsh spread rumors about a huge secret armament happening in Vanus. Bombs exploded at strategic places in Astarian cities. And soon everybody was in fear over the threat from Vanus. A threat well fabricated enough to convince the Queen she needs a Royal Air Force. And that's how Welsh became the richest man in the world. If that was true, history would have to be rewritten. After the war, Welsh needed new threats to keep his business running. Arthur's kin is that new threat. That's why they didn't kill her like the others, but brought her back as a gift to the Queen. They didn't expect her to be sentient. And it occurred to no one that they had just slaughtered an entire... Ah! Ah! Arthur! Please! Ah! What? Ah! Ah! I'm, s I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm trying. I'm doing my best to, oh, to keep my feelings to myself, but the horrors of that day, I couldn't hold it back. It's all right, Arthur. We're here for you. Let's, let's think about something else. What just happened? Arthur was just overwhelmed by the memories of her brother dying before her in a hailstorm of bullets, and... She inadvertently shared it with me. For a moment it was like... I had been there myself. The world needs to know about this. And then what? You think they're gonna be all... Well, pardon me folks, my back and give us a lamb back? No, but the blood of our friends and families is on Welsh's hands. If there's a way to make him burn in hell for his sins, I'll be first in line. Us! Against the most powerful man in the world! It's, it's hopeless! Our oh, powers can be taken away just as easily as they were granted. 
Yeah, but who could do that? Expect maybe the queen herself. Exactly. Hey, are you crazy? No. Do you see how author's memories affected Florence when she remembered the massacre? If we can give Queen Eris the same profound first-hand experience of author's horrible memories, she is not going to question what she will see. Intruding someone's mind against their will... It's, it's a big taboo among my people. It can even make them go mad. But he's right, isn't he? Uh, probably. Look, tonight will be the first new moon of summer. Like every year, the Queen is going to visit the Shrine of the Forefathers at the south end of the Palace Garden, lay down a single white rose, and pray for the goodwill of their spirits. It's going to be dark, and she's going to be all alone. Nobody is going to expect anybody coming from the air. So, you want me to swoop down on her and carry her away? It's not that easy. I don't want to hurt her. If the slightest thing goes wrong, we are dead. And even if I manage to bring her here and share my memories, we have no idea how she is going to react. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy to bet everything on one card like that. Does anybody have a better idea? <sighs> Listen. If you don't act now, you will soon be dead and Arthur ends up as an exhibit in the Queen's Zoological Garden. Well, she's out to get you as we speak. Arthur? Technically, I could do it. It's against my innermost beliefs, though. It just doesn't feel right. But I also feel how desperate you are. And I, I don't have a better plan either. Do you think it will work? It could. Then I'll trust you. I will do it. I can drive you all to Port Ospen. My truck fits two horses. Mm, or one author. Oh. oh, can someone please bring the children back in? At least they thought I was a dragon. I'll be coming with you. And me too. Meet me tonight at nine behind my house. Good evening, everyone. Are we ready to go? I'd like to go through the steps again one more time before we start. Yes, that's a good idea. I don't have a very good feeling about this. All right, so here's the plan. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ilian. Florence, Cal, and Arthur get on the back of a truck, and Ilian drives them all into the city. Check. Ilion and stops at the northern end of the park behind her hedge. Check. Then, right before midnight, Miss Arthur flies northeast over the palace wall and there's some circles till she can spot the queen down in the garden. Yes, correct. Miss Arthur goes down, grabs the queen and gets her to the car. Cal and Florence are going to watch her then and Ilion drives everyone back. Yep. I reckon we got about an hour or two before anyone will notice the Queen's gone. Which means that if we don't manage to bring her back until then, we are fucked six ways to Sunday. <laughs> oh, that's a new one. <laughs> okay, Arthur, ready to go now? Oh, I'm a bit worried about the wind. Spot landings are tricky with heavy crosswinds, even for me, but I will make do. Then let's get on a truck. <laughs> I 
I... I really don't like small enclosed spaces. I've been in a cage for too long. We'll be by your side the whole time. Relax. There's nothing to worry about. If you say so. Wait. Wait. Something doesn't smell right. What? Get behind what? me! What? It's a trap! Shit. No! Shoot! We need her alive! <laughs> I said don't shoot me! I'm out of ammo. Why didn't you shoot the tires? Because we would be dead now. No! Arthur! No, Arthur! Don't give in! You have to get off the truck now! Come on! They... I think they poisoned me. What? I can't move my legs anymore. No! Arthur! Ah. Ah. Run! Run, you fools! No, Flora, help me pull! Come on! She's way too heavy! No! I'm not going to let you go! Emma! Cal, this is all last chance to run! Run, you idiot! Why don't we do this more often? Why don't we? Just what we're doing tonight. What a lovely night. Gee, but it's oh, damn, my glass is empty again. Let what me fix that. <laughs> this is really fine wine. It must have cost you a fortune. Not really. You know what's better than being the official confectioner of the royal family? Being the favorite confectioner of the royal family staff. Lowly working folk like us take care of each other. I see. I have to restrain myself or I won't be able to walk you home. Who said I'm going home tonight? Oh, but don't you have to work tomorrow? Every single person in this goddamn bakery is always late. Why can't I be the one who's late for once? Too right. To hell with work. Cheers! Cheers! What on earth is going on out there? Uh, the fire station is around the corner. You get used to it after a while. There are so many ways to set your house ablaze. Forgetting the pot in the oven, smoking in bed. Did you know more than 5,000 people die that way every year? Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. An ongoing series of explosions is still shaking the city of Port Ospen. The police department reported another detonation around 11 p.m. at a bakery on Loose Road. Following Loose Road? On the Peter That's my shop, Abe! That is my shop! Oh, for God's sake, it is. The building is on fire 
and has partly collapsed. Florence! What? Something must have happened to Florence! Eva, wait! What does Florence have to do with this? She isn't even here! You don't understand! Damn right I don't! Those were no terrorists! It was Welsh! He wants to kill me, because Florence is dead! Why? I already told you, I can't talk about it! Eva, please, I'm on your side. Please let me help you. Please trust me. <laughs> oh, you're right. It's too late anyway. Peter was a genius, you know? If he had an idea, he would spend days locked up in this office. And the more people told him that something was impossible, the more stubbornly he would move forward. But a businessman, he was not. He knew Welsh from his university days. And with his MBA degree, he seemed to be a good man to partner up with. At first, all was great. Welsh secured funding, ran the books and hired new stuff. Peter was happy as long as we didn't have to starve. Welsh, however, wanted more. When the kingdom began to arm itself against Vanos, Welsh saw a golden opportunity. When Peter refused, Welsh threw a tantrum. Unfit for business, unfit for life. That's what he yelled and then he slammed the door in Peter's face. And he hated Peter so much that he had him killed? It wasn't even hate. For him, it was more like a change in business strategy. Removing the single point of failure from the process. All he had to do was to disable the fuel gorge on Peter's plane. A murderer and a coward. Welsh took me aside during the funeral and told me what he did. And that Florence would soon share Peter's fate if I didn't voluntarily relinquish my inheritance. What stopped him from killing both of you anyways after he got what he wanted? I'm not sure. Maybe my relationship to the royals. I've been living in fear ever since. And I tried to keep Florence as safe and as far away from anything that Welsh controls. That he tries to kill me now, after so many years of silence, can't be a coincidence. Something must have happened that made him think he can no longer control me. Something must have happened to Florence. If that is true, you should stay here. Nobody knows you're here. Don't let Welsh know that you're still alive. And then? What next, Abe? What about Florence? At my house? I can't just sit here and do nothing. My life just went up in flames. Don't you understand? We will find a way. We're the good guys, Eva. The good guys always find a way. Henchmen, they shot everyone down. Oh, oh my lord, Will! Will! Oh. He's the only one still breathing. Everyone else is dead. Ilian, that bastard! I always knew something was sketchy about him. Will? Will? Talk to me, damn! You two stay here and have an eye on him. I'll go get the doctor. Be quick, he's bleeding to death. Then do something about it. Kel? Come over here and help me. What am I supposed to do? Get me some fresh towels! All right. No? So, what now? We're going to make a tourniquet. Uh, a what? A tourniquet! They taught me how to make people bleed, not the other way around. What the fuck is a tourniquet? I'll fold up this towel and put it on the wound. Now, take the other towel and tie it down really tight. The pressure stops the bleeding, all right? All right. Good. 
<sighs> I think that's pretty much all we can do for now. How... how do you know all this? Father insisted I take the courses. I was the only girl in class and the boys beat each other up who's gonna be the next dummy. Wait... Is he still breathing? Uh, what? No! No, no, no! We're losing him! <sighs> Shit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I ten. am the one who deserves to die, not Will. I am guilty of this whole mess. One, two, as much as Welsh three, himself is guilty. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, I used ten. to be one of his men. How could I? How? I'm not going to give up on him just yet. One, Jack two, and Sly three, are gone. What a, what's going to become six, of their families? Seven, eight, nine, their children. Ten. Working for Welsh always felt like a game, but suddenly it's two, all dead three, serious. Four, five, six, I did ten, whatever eight, Welsh wanted. Nine, ten. To whoever he wanted me to do it to, but I never felt anything for them. One, two, but these are my friends. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, Such a ten, piece of shit. Oh, will you shut up and stop pitting yourself? This is hard enough as it is! Uh, uh, yes! That did it! Expectations too high. I had to block him from under the table at the tavern. Let can the man enjoy his time after work. Listen, my husband is dying. If you want to be able to enjoy anything in your life after today, you better move your butt and do your work. This is okay. Let's see. The victim? No, the patient. He looks kind of miserable. <laughs> what happened to him? Well, he got shot at. Three hits. One to the shoulder, two to the thigh. Good, good. What? <laughs> yeah, no vital organs in there. Does he bleed from both sides? Um, oh. yeah, kinda. <laughs> Lucky bastard. What? What are you talking about? He's in a goddamn coma. Sure he's lost a lot of blood. But it means the bullets went straight through. A lot less damage that way, and you wouldn't want me to poke around inside of him right now. Let's see. Ah, yeah, this one here. Uh, honey, if you would be so nice to hold this for me. Thank you. Now, let's step back. Ready, set, go! Ouch! Haha, <laughs> bullseye! 50 points. Good thing he's unconscious. <laughs> a stiff drink gives you a steady hand. What is this? Shall... <coughs> Shall the solution? Not as good as fresh blood, but it'll give the old heart something to pump. 
If you manage to put more of this in than blood comes out of there, he'll make it through the night. Now, I, uh, I need a bowl of water and a bottle of strong alcohol. All right, I'll get the water. Um, where do I... Uh, this is for disinfection, right? Damn straight, give me that. I guess that's all the help we're going to get for tonight. Yes. Well, I think I can take over from here. Stay strong, May. Stay strong. Uh. Uh. Um. Hey. Hey. How are you doing? Uh, I've never felt so useless. Yeah, I know that feeling. When my life suddenly changed from airplanes to cream puffs, it was just the same. Our only friend out here is dying on the kitchen table. Even the goddamn shit-faced doctor is more useful than I am. I used to be strong and in control of my life. And now look at me! For the most part of your life, you only had to follow orders. You didn't give a damn about anything because you didn't have to. But now you do. This is how it feels to care. You're finally taking control of your life. Then why the fuck am I so scared? Finding a new purpose in life is a scary thing. So what is my purpose? Why settle for one? For me, there are so many things that give life meaning. Happy ones like supporting my mother or bringing joy to my friends. Dark ones like avenging the death of my father. Or simple ones like just enjoying the day. The only thing I can think about right now is author. Then author it is. She has definitely awoken something in you. Something that has lain dormant for way too long. Something beautiful. You know what separates good people from bad people? The good ones can change. And they will always find a way. If there were a way to save Arthur, I wouldn't be sitting here. But there might be. Let's get some sleep. And tomorrow, we're going to make a few phone calls. Eva, hey Eva, come on, wake up. I've got great news. What? What is it? Florence just called. Really? She's in St. Elisa. She's free and she's doing fine. Oh, oh thank God. Is she still on the line? Can I talk to her? Ah, uh, sorry, she called about an hour ago. Why didn't you wake me up right away? <laughs> you lay awake the whole night. I didn't have the heart to wake you up. Besides, she was calling from the post office and she had a long line behind her. But I've got the motorbike fixed up and I'm going to pick her up in St. Elisa in about an hour. So she'll soon be here and you'll be able to talk to her in person. She's got one hell of a story to tell. Did she tell you what happened? Nah, only the essentials. She escaped. She's fine. She knows everything about the conspiracy against you. And she needs our help to end it. Wait, what? Yeah, you heard me right. She has a plan and she insists we play along. We'll see about that. She wants us to get her and a friend into the palace. They would still let you in, wouldn't they? Only when I'm making a delivery. But my kitchen was in my house and my house went up in flames. But if you could, you could get us in? Maybe. <laughs> Excellent. 
I once fixed a friend's car for free and now he kinda owes me a favor. His sister owns Cantrell's Bakery in Herringstown and she has everything we need. She expects you to be there at noon. Abe, I'm not even fully awake yet. Oh, and since you won't be able to do it alone, I've also sent the neighbor's boy to wake up all of your employees and send them to Herringstown right away. Be honest, Abe. The only reason you didn't wake me up was that you were afraid I'd stop you. This is crazy, even by Florence's standards. Do you think she'd have accepted no as an answer? She's Peter's girl after all. You didn't even tell me what the plan is. I can't, because if I did, you'd stop me. Now, if you will please excuse me... Abe, for heaven's sake, where are you going? To St. Elisa, picking up Florence and Cal. Cal? As in Cal Davis? Oh, didn't I mention that he's on our side now? Oh, I need a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's on the kitchen table. I... Uh, now what are you waiting hmm? for? It's time to get ready! For what? <laughs> to bake a cake for the Queen! Oh, I hate ceremonial occasions. Always the same people, always the same endless small talk. Such a waste of time. Well, this is going to be different. Let me promise you that. Really? Well, we'll see. The best thing about these receptions is usually the cake. Didn't you hear? Eva Harrington's shop burnt down. What? No cake at all? All right, that's it. I'm leaving. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Let's raise our glasses to Ernest the First, by the grace of God, Queen of the Kingdom of Greater Star, Defender of the Faith, the Queen! My lords and friends of the royal family, the people of Greater Star are diligent and fertile, but we do not know for how much longer the land that our thriving industry is built upon will be able to support it. We have reached a point where our borders are no longer restricted by opposing territories, but by the mere coastline of our continent. To conquer new lands, we must go where no one has gone before. In this matter, I have invited the esteemed Mr. Welsh, who is going to talk about his latest discoveries. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you. A few weeks ago, we have returned from our transoceanic expedition, and we... <clears throat> Who in God's... Eva Harrington? Oh, and she brought the cake. <gasps> it's so beautiful. I'm so sorry, Mr. Welsh. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Please go on. All right, what kind of game is being played here? I beg your pardon, sir. I'm delivering the cake you ordered. How is it even possible? By the skilled work of artisan pastry chefs. This has to be a trap, right? No, it's a family recipe. <laughs> well then, thank you for the cake, Miss Harrington. You may now... Leave. God save the Queen. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> now look at this. This work of art. So much chocolates and cherries on top. <clears throat> uh, fine. But I bet you didn't expect that I could do this! Uh, uh, <laughs> a nice trick! <laughs> My father used to be a magician. Mr. Welsh, your behavior is most peculiar. 
Is everything all right with you? Uh, oh yes, uh, of course, your highness. Uh, of course. <laughs> I I'm sorry. I, I think the workload is getting to me. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's go on with the presentation. <clears throat> <laughs> Where was I? Uh, yes, uh, the uh, ex uh, oceanic transpedition. Uh, I mean, the trans oceanic expedition. Uh, uh, at the parents of our lives, my man and I have found a new continent that, that shall from now on be known as uh, Desia. Uh, in honor of her uh, majesty, uh, majesty, the queen of greater star. <laughs> It's, it's, it's a land rich of ma many riches, like trees, mountains, uh, rivers. <laughs> the coast is guarded by flying bees, against whom we prevail, and one of which I hereby present to you, your majesty, as gift a sign of our loyalty. Uh, behold, the beast! As you can see, it is very dangerous. As I said, dangerous. It's well right there. Open the cage now. Ignore Welsh Arthur. Remember our plan? Go for the Queen. The rest will sort itself out. Oh, I hate him so much. I am going to kill him. Kill him! Kill him! Kill him! Florence? Now? No! Don't open the cage! Something is wrong with her! But you can't wait any longer. It's now or never. No! What? What's happening? Ourselves. Brother, please turn back. Never. Sitho. Sitho. No. 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 I'm 
going to make them pay for this. I swear by my life they are going to pay for this. will never be at peace again for the rest of his life. I... I nearly killed him. He's in pain. Oh my god. I must have broken every bone in him. I... I didn't mean to do this. I'm so sorry. I never realized how much grief and hate you were carrying with you. I hid it from you. Why? I didn't want to burden you with it, and I was ashamed. I didn't want you to ever see me like that. Oh, oh Sorry to interrupt your intimate moment, but you do realize we're going to die soon, aren't you? Can someone explain to me what on earth is going on here? I've seen you before. You used to work for Welsh, and you're Eva Harrington's daughter, right? And this is Arthur. Arthur, bow before your queen. She does tricks? What is she? Some kind of pet? She is a person and no more an animal than we are. Welch did terrible things to her and her people. If it is like you say, why doesn't she talk to us? Oh, she'd love to. All you have to do is touch my paw. I beg your pardon? Look, I'm not armed and Kel is going to drop his gun too. Uh, am I? Absolutely. All right. This is not a revolt. You are my queen, and I do not have the right to force this upon you. However, I know that you are a good person. Yeah, and what separates a good person from a bad person is that a good person can change, and they will always find new ways. Decide to end our lives now, and everything will stay the same, and ignorance will prevail. Choose to trust me and you will learn things that are of utmost importance for you and the entirety of your kingdom and many new ways will open up for you to take. The choice is yours, my queen. Welcome to the Evening News on Astar National Radio. Great Astar's most proficient industry magnate, Sarkhan T. Welsh, faces a devastating new scandal following a whistleblower report. The Royal House confirmed that they are investigating evidence of fraud, attempted murder, blackmail, multiple antitrust violations, embezzlement and treason. The Harrington and Welsh company did not respond to our request for comments but a copy of the report was leaked to this reporter. The allegations, if proven, will forever tarnish the company's reputation and its owners. Evidence strongly points towards the crucial role Mr. Welsh played in the escalation of the conflict with Thanos, with the sole goal to increase his profit as an arms manufacturer. A particularly explosive revelation is that he might be personally responsible for the death of Peter M. Harrington, aviation pioneer and national hero and the attempted murder of Ava Harrington, his wife. In a statement to the Port Osborne Telegraph, 
Ava Harrington confirmed the accusations, stating that she did not agree to Welsh's acquisition of the company under her own free will, therefore making the contract null and void. She has appealed to the Queen to award her with a full ownership of the company after her house was recently destroyed by a bomb blast engineered by the company under the guise of a Venotian terrorist attack. Furthermore, the Royal Geographic Society has withdrawn their support of the findings of Mr. Welsh's so-called trans-oceanic expedition. After close examination, it is highly doubtful that the expedition took place in the form the Harrington and Welsh Company claimed. When police searched company headquarters, the fantastic beast was nowhere to be found. They did, however, find a workshop with materials suitable to build a highly sophisticated mechanical puppet. In all likelihood, the beast was nothing more than a very realistic marionette, and it fooled us all. Whether the new continent really exists remains to be proven, but the Queen has put all research projects in that regard on indefinite hold. Sarkhan T. Welsh is being detained in the high security prison in Port Ospen. The Queen's medical advisor reports that he is in poor mental health and is showing signs of delusion and mania. The company was put under forced administration by the Queen. This story will surely keep the country in suspense for weeks, as new details of these tremendous conspiracies are revealed. As always, stay tuned for updates from Astar National Radio. One final announcement on our own accord. It is with great sadness that we have to report the death of our friend and colleague, Mr. Fifo McBookhead. He died in the performance of his duties as a field reporter on the Peter M. Harrington Airfield, struck down by the explosion of a terrorist bomb. He will always be remembered. A memorial service will be held on August 21st at 2 p.m. at the Memorial Church in Captain Yard. <laughs> Greetings, Miss Arthur. You look marvelous, my lady, as always. So glad to see you again. Hello, my darling. Do you know where Florence is? Is she on the airship with Cal? Mom, Abe! Hello! Oh, so good to see you! I've just had Carl finish up packing. Hello, Mr. Davis. <laughs> Hello, Mr. French. Why suddenly so formal? Oh, I'm just giving you the respect you finally deserve. <laughs> no, I don't know. Oh, do not sell yourself short, young man. You're about to leave this continent, possibly forever. You're going to be a ground-dwelling stranger in a society of airborne people whose language you'll never be able to speak. That doesn't just take courage. That takes ball bearings of steel. So, 
Hats off to you, Mr. Davis. Hats off. It seems like nothing ever scares you. Oh, I am very scared. <laughs> The moment the Queen told us that society isn't ready for contact with another species yet? Mm. I knew I had to go with Arthur. I love her so much. I'd rather be with her than with anybody else. It will be worth it. How are you going to talk to her without Florence? Arthur is picking up more and more of our language. Florence has been a great help in teaching her the basics in just a few weeks. And did you know that Arthur's people have a written language too? It's surprising that someone can have such a sophisticated culture and on the other hand still hunt the neighbor's sheep. <laughs> no, no, she's a civilized person. She would never do that. Right, Arthur? <laughs> It's all right. It's alright. Florence, do you want to hear some really good news? Yes, ma'am. We received a letter this morning. Welsh has been dispossessed and the Queen herself signed the company back over to us. Oh, that's wonderful news! And guess what's even better? Abe and I are going to get married... What? Harrington and French. How does that sound to you? Oh, that sounds awesome! Congratulations! <laughs> does that mean I can become an airplane engineer? Mm, yes. No more cake. <laughs> <laughs> been talking about. Oh, congratulations on your new job. And my best wishes to Abe and Eva. <laughs> I'm so happy and so sad at the same time. I think my head is going to explode. <sighs> um, by the way, is there any news about May and Will? How are they doing? Well, Will is still walking on crutches, but his leg is getting better every day. May is struggling to keep the farm running, but she's getting help from a few friends. I understand. Please give them my best greetings. They are good people. I will. I promise. It's time for us to go. I still can't believe today is the day you're going home. You're my friend, and it feels like I've known you for all my life. Maybe we will come back one distant day. Who knows? I'm going to miss your voice in my head. Oh, oh yes, me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Have a safe trip home and take good care of each other. Farewell, my friend. Farewell. Farewell. Bye bye, Cal. Bye bye, Arthur. <laughs> Farewell, Mr. Harrington. Farewell, Mr. French. <laughs> Thank you.
true Touch and break through Brave new world's tale My voice on bill Sets sail But unto the sky of a star.